You might be surprised by what I'm about to share, but it's crucial to stay silent and focused about what's coming your way. You're watching another video exclusively for the Chosen Ones. If you are not one of the Chosen Ones, it is likely that you will not watch this video to the end. Feel free to turn it off, as the content may not resonate or vibrate with your soul or spirit. However, if you are a true Chosen One, you will fully understand everything I'm about to explain. I stand before you, not as a mere messenger, but as a voice of divine truth, calling out to the Chosen Ones, those marked by the Almighty for a purpose that transcends the ordinary. Today, I stand as a beacon of hope in a world that often feels dark and uncertain, to deliver a message that has the power to unlock the doors of heaven and release a flood of blessings into your life. The enemy has tried to keep you bound, to silence your praise, to rob you of your joy, but today, that ends. Today, you will discover the explosive, life-changing power of worship. Worship that breaks chains, worship that defeats the enemy, worship that transforms lives. This is not just another message. This is a call to arms, a divine summons to rise up and claim your breakthrough. I stand before you to declare that the power of God is not a distant, abstract concept, but a reality that you can experience right here, right now. The key to accessing this power lies in one word, worship. But what is worship? Is it just the act of singing songs on a Sunday morning? Is it merely lifting your hands in the sanctuary? No, worship is far more profound than that. Worship is the full surrender of your heart to God. It is the expression of your deepest love and reverence for the one who created you, the one who holds your destiny in his hands. Welcome to a word of wisdom. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, and turn on notifications to keep up to date with the word of God. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 22, verse 3, But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. This means that God is enthroned in your praises. When you worship, you are not just offering words, you are building a throne for God to inhabit. And where God is enthroned, His power is unleashed. Think about that for a moment. Your worship invites the omnipotent creator of the universe to take his rightful place in your life. And when he does, every chain that has bound you, every obstacle that has stood in your way, every enemy that has sought to destroy you, must bow to his authority. Consider the story of Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16 verse 25 to 26. These men were beaten, chained, and thrown into the darkest part of a prison. By all human standards, they were in a hopeless situation. But what did they do? They worshipped. They lifted their voices in praise to God, and suddenly, the ground began to shake. The prison doors flew open, and their chains fell off. Their worship was the key that unlocked their breakthrough. Today, I declare that your worship has the power to unlock your breakthrough. Whatever you are facing, whether it's financial hardship, illness, broken relationships, or spiritual dryness, know that your worship is the key that will open the doors of heaven. As you lift your voice in genuine praise, you are inviting God's power to invade your circumstances. And when God steps in, no chain can remain unbroken, no prison can remain closed, and no enemy can stand. I'm here before you to reveal a divine secret that the enemy has tried to keep hidden from you. Worship is your greatest weapon. The devil knows the power of worship, which is why he tries so hard to silence your praise. He knows that when you worship, you disrupt his plans, you confuse his strategies, and you render him powerless. Look at the story of King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. The king was faced with an overwhelming army, a coalition of enemies that far outnumbered his forces. By all military logic, Jehoshaphat should have been defeated. But instead of sending out his best warriors, he sent out worshippers. And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against their enemies, and they were defeated without a single sword being drawn. 
Your praise is a weapon that confounds the enemy. When you praise God in the midst of your battles, you are declaring that your trust is in Him and not in your circumstances. You are telling the enemy that no matter what he throws at you, you will not be shaken because your God is greater. And as you praise, God himself steps onto the battlefield. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 68 verse 1, Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. When you praise, God arises, and every enemy, every fear, every doubt, every attack must scatter. So when the enemy comes against you with his lies and accusations, when he tries to overwhelm you with fear and doubt, do not be silent. Open your mouth and praise God. Let your worship rise like a battle cry and watch as the enemy's plans are destroyed. Remember, the battle is not yours, it is the Lord's. And through your worship, you are inviting the Lord of hosts to fight on your behalf. Worship doesn't just change your circumstances, it changes you. True worship is a transformative act. When you worship, you are not only lifting your voice to God, you are opening your heart to Him. You are allowing His presence to penetrate the deepest parts of your being, to heal, restore and renew you. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable worship. It then goes on to say that by doing so, we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. This transformation is not a one-time event. It is a continual process that happens every time you enter into true worship. Consider the life of David. David was a man after God's own heart, not because he was perfect, but because he was a worshipper. When David worshipped, he poured out his heart to God with complete honesty and vulnerability. In his Psalms, you can see the full range of human emotion, joy, sorrow, anger, fear, love and repentance. And through his worship, David was transformed. He became a man of extraordinary faith, courage and wisdom. He was not just a king, he was a prophet, a warrior, and a man whose life still inspires us today. When you worship, you are inviting God to transform you. Your heart becomes fertile ground for his peace, joy, and strength. Worship renews your mind, heals your wounds, and strengthens your spirit. It shifts your focus from your problems to the greatness of God, enabling you to see your life through the lens of His promises rather than your present difficulties. In moments of true worship, you will find that God's desires become your desires. Your heart will beat in rhythm with His and you will begin to move in the direction of His will for your life. This alignment is what leads to true spiritual growth and the discernment needed to navigate life's challenges with grace and wisdom. Worship is more than an act of devotion. It is the altar where your heart aligns with God's will. Worship is not just something you do, it is who you are. It is the expression of your identity as a child of God, and it is the place where your will is surrendered to His. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6, we are instructed to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your path straight. Worship is an act of trust. It is saying to God, I don't understand what is happening, but I trust you. I surrender my plans, my desires, my will to you because I believe that your plans for me are good. When you worship, you are acknowledging that God's ways are higher than your ways, His thoughts higher than your thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 to 9. You are admitting that His plans for you are better than anything you could plan for yourself. This humility is the foundation of a life that is truly aligned with God's will. As you worship, you begin to see your life through God's eyes. You begin to understand that every trial, every challenge, every obstacle is part of His divine plan to mold you into the person He created you to be. And as you align your heart with His will, you will find that His desires become your desires. 
You will begin to long for the things that God longs for, to love the things that God loves, and to pursue the things that God has set before you. This alignment with God's will is what leads to true spiritual growth. It is what enables you to discern His voice in the midst of the noise and to walk in the paths that He has prepared for you. And as you walk in His will, you will experience the fullness of His blessings, blessings that are far greater than anything you could ever imagine. Let's also look at worship in the wilderness, finding strength and hope in your darkest hours. I stand before you to declare that even in the wilderness, even in the darkest, most barren seasons of your life, worship can be your lifeline. The wilderness is a place of testing, a place of refining, a place where your faith is stretched to its limits. It is a place where you feel alone, where the promises of God seem distant, where hope is hard to find. But it is in the wilderness that worship becomes most powerful. The Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. During this time, they experienced hunger, thirst and hardship, but they also experienced the miraculous provision of God, manna from heaven, water from a rock, a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night to guide them. Their journey was a test of faith, and it was in the wilderness that God taught them to rely on Him completely. In your own wilderness seasons, you may feel abandoned, forgotten, or even punished. But I tell you today that the wilderness is not a place of punishment. It is a place of preparation. It is where God strips away everything that you have relied on apart from Him so that you can learn to trust Him fully. And it is in the wilderness that your worship becomes a lifeline a connection to the source of all strength and hope. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 18, the prophet declares, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will be joyful in God my Saviour. This is worship in the wilderness. It is praising God not for what He has done, but for who He is. Faithful, unchanging, and always present. When you worship in the wilderness, you are declaring that your faith is not dependent on your circumstances. You are saying to God, Even though I don't see the way out, I trust you. Even though I don't understand, I worship you. And as you do, you will find that God's presence becomes more tangible, His peace more profound, His strength more sustaining. The wilderness is not the end of your journey. It is the place where God prepares you for the next level of your calling. And as you worship through it, you will emerge stronger, wiser, and more in tune with His will for your life. In the book of Hebrews, we are encouraged to continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise the fruit of lips that openly profess His name. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15 This is a praise that costs you something, a praise that comes from a place of deep pain, loss or struggle. The story of Job is a powerful example of the sacrifice of praise. Job lost everything, his wealth, his health, his family. Yet, in the midst of his suffering, he declared, The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Job chapter 1 verse 21. Job's praise was not dependent on his circumstances. It was rooted in his unshakable faith in God. When you find yourself in the midst of trials, when the weight of the world feels too heavy to bear, remember that your praise is a sacrifice that pleases God. It is an act of faith a declaration that you trust Him even when you cannot see His hand at work. And it is this kind of praise that moves the heart of God. The Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 51 verse 17 that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. When you offer God your brokenness, your pain, your heartache in worship, He does not turn away. Instead, He draws near and He heals. 
your sacrifice of praise becomes a sweet-smelling offering before his throne, and in return, he pours out his grace and mercy upon you. True worship is not just about what you say with your lips, it is about how you live your life. It is about walking in obedience to God's word, even when it is difficult, even when it goes against your own desires or understanding. In 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 22, the prophet Samuel confronts King Saul with these powerful words. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Saul had offered sacrifices to God, but he had disobeyed God's command, and as a result, he lost his kingdom. God is not looking for empty rituals. He is looking for hearts that are fully surrendered to him. He is looking for worshippers who not only lift their hands in praise, but also walk in obedience to his commands. This is the kind of worship that brings divine favor, the kind that opens the windows of heaven and pours out blessings that you cannot contain. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 15, If you love me, keep my commands. Worship is an expression of your love for God, and obedience is the proof of that love. When you walk in obedience, you are saying to God, I trust you. I trust that your ways are higher than my ways, your thoughts higher than my thoughts, and in that trust you will find the favor of God resting upon your life. I'm here to proclaim that God is seeking true worshipers, those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus said in John chapter 4 verse 23 to 24, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. True worship is not about outward expression. It is about inward sincerity. It is about worshipping God with a pure heart, guided by the Holy Spirit and grounded in the truth of his word. This is the depth of worship that God desires, a worship that goes beyond the surface and reaches the core of who you are. When you worship in spirit and truth, you connect with God on a deeper level. Your worship becomes a reflection of your relationship with Him, a relationship built on love, trust and obedience. This is the kind of worship that moves mountains, opens doors and brings about the miraculous. Chosen ones, I urge you to embrace the power of worship in your life. Let your worship be more than a moment. Let it become your lifestyle, your weapon, your source of strength, and your connection to God. Worship in spirit and truth, with a heart fully surrendered to God's will, and watch as he unlocks breakthroughs, defeats the enemy, and transforms your life. As you leave today, remember that worship is the key that unlocks the door to God's power in your life. Let your praise rise like incense before the throne of God, and may his presence dwell with you always, bringing healing, peace and victory. As you take in this message, don't let it simply stir your heart and fade away. Let it move you to action. Share this message with others who need to hear it. There are countless souls who are struggling under the weight of their calling, who are battling in silence and wondering if their faith is worth it. Be the voice that reminds them that God sees them, that he honors their faith, and that the reward is on its way. If this message has touched your heart, take a moment to comment Amen, affirming that you stand in agreement with God's word. Let this be your declaration of faith, a bold step forward in embracing the cost and trusting God for the reward. Every Amen is not just a comment, it is a statement of belief, a proclamation that you are chosen by God and ready to walk in the fullness of your faith. And for those who feel led, subscribe and continue this journey with us. God is speaking powerfully in this season, and you don't want to miss the words that he is releasing to strengthen, encourage, and uplift his chosen ones. When you subscribe, 
you are stepping into a community of believers who are committed to walking out their faith together, supporting one another through the trials and celebrating the victories that God brings. Finally, I encourage you to share this message. Don't keep the fire to yourself. Spread it so that others may be ignited with the truth of God's word. There are many who need this encouragement, who need to be reminded that their small faith can move mountains. Together, we can light a fire in the hearts of the chosen, preparing them for the glorious future that God has promised. Let's walk this journey together, trusting in God's faithfulness every step of the way. Go forth today with the knowledge that you are chosen, you are called, and your faith, no matter how small, is more powerful than you realize. Stay connected to God, trust Him in all things, and let your faith grow into something unshakable. You are about to see the mighty hand of God move in your life in ways you never thought possible. Your mustard seed faith will grow, and nothing, absolutely nothing, will be impossible for you. Let's pray this prayer of faith together as one family, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth, the one who was, who is, and who is to come, we stand in awe of your majesty and power. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is none like you, O Lord, none who can compare to your greatness. We exalt your holy name, for you are worthy of all our praise, all our worship, and all our adoration. Father, as we come before your throne of grace, we do so with hearts ablaze, filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. We lift up our voices in worship, not just with our lips, but with our very lives, for you alone are our God. We recognize that our worship is not just a song we sing, but a life we live in full surrender to you. Lord, ignite within us a holy passion, a burning desire to worship you in spirit and in truth, to worship you with every fiber of our being. We call upon your power, O God, the power that split the Red Sea, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, the power that brings life to dry bones. We ask that you release that power in our lives today as we lift up your name in worship. Father, as we worship, we invite your presence to invade every area of our lives. Let your power be made manifest in our circumstances, in our battles, in our trials. We declare that through our worship, breakthroughs are being unlocked, chains are being broken, and the enemy's plans are being utterly defeated. Lord, we stand firm in the truth that worship is our warfare and our praise is our weapon. We decree and declare that every stronghold of the enemy is coming down in the mighty name of Jesus. Every scheme, every strategy, every attack of the enemy is nullified and rendered powerless by the blood of Jesus. As we worship, we take our place on the battlefield, knowing that the victory is already ours in Christ Jesus. We proclaim that the walls of Jericho are falling, the giants are being slain, and every mountain is being moved by the power of our praise. Lord, we intercede for those who will share this message, those who will subscribe, like, and comment, Amen, to this word. Father, we ask that you pour out your blessings upon them in ways they cannot even begin to imagine. Open the windows of heaven and release a supernatural outpouring of favor, provision, and protection over their lives. As they participate in the spreading of your word, let them experience the fullness of your joy, the richness of your peace, and the depth of your love. May their homes be filled with your presence, their hearts with your joy, and their lives with your power. Lord, let them see your hand at work in every area of their lives, guiding, providing, and protecting them as they walk in obedience to your call. Father, for every heart that hears this message, we pray for a divine encounter with your presence. 
Let your word penetrate deep into the very marrow of their bones, cutting through every lie, every doubt, every fear. Let it be like fire shut up in their bones, a fire that cannot be contained, a fire that transforms and renews. We pray that this message will break every chain, shatter every stronghold, and set captives free. Lord, let your word be a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces, breaking through hardened hearts and bringing them to a place of surrender and worship before you. We pray for those who are in the wilderness, those who are in the midst of trials and tribulations. Lord, give them the strength to worship you even in the darkest of times. Remind them that you are with them, that you will never leave them nor forsake them. As they lift up their voices in worship, may they feel your presence surrounding them, comforting them and lifting them up. Let their praise be a declaration of faith, a testimony that even in the valley, you are still God and you are still good. Father, we speak life, healing and restoration over every soul that is weary, broken and wounded. As they turn their hearts to you in worship, let them experience the healing balm of your love. Heal their brokenness, restore their joy, and renew their strength. Let your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let them know that you are the God who heals, the God who restores, and the God who makes all things new. Lord, we ask that you would seal this prayer with the power of your Holy Spirit. Let it rise before you as a sweet-smelling offering, pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We declare that your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, and we give you all the glory, all the honor and all the praise, for you are worthy, O Lord. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray, believing that you have heard us and that you are answering even now. Amen, amen and Amen. If this message has touched your heart and you'd like to support our mission of spreading God's Word, there's a link pinned in the comments below. No gift is too small. Your generosity, even just a penny, can bring hope and joy to someone's life. Thank you for partnering with God in this important work.